So anyway, it's okay. I tried to go to these outreaches that were just like parties where, you know, there was a lot of drinking going on, you know, all the worldly talk and everything when I got saved. And I was like, I gotta win these people, you know, for you, Jesus. I would go in, I would want to tell my friends that I love them with everything that I am, but you know, Satan was working overtime trying to shut me down, shut me down. Don't say anything. Don't you want to come back? Don't you want to come back to this pool party? These friends you grew up with, you start talking about Jesus, the enemy would tell me, you're not going to invite it back. He was right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got new friends now. Exactly. Yeah. Now I'm in the real party. Amen. See, now the real party has started, right? It's the party. It's the party of the joy and the peace. No condemnation. There's, you know, preachers walking around. I haven't been offended forever. You know, they're not walking in guilt, condemnation. It was nailed to the cross. I mean, they're walking it out. People are walking this thing out. They don't care if their sister or brother rejected them. They just love on everybody because God's love is enough to go around. Here we go. So we are the ones that are reconciling people and that are in this world back to God. That's our job. We're all, we're just all, like my job here tonight and the next seven weeks is to get you people on fire for Jesus that you won't mind, you won't mind being rejected. You need you, you, to you just start out the conversation and just say, excuse me, I'm a lover of Jesus. You know what I'm telling you about. <laughs> I probably won't go over that big, but anyway. <laughs> they'll be like, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, but you know what? God comes. I've already said ridiculous stuff like that, and people started to cry. Like, I, like, like cry like, I need you, you know? And I will tell you 99% of the time that if you, if you don't mention Jesus right away, you can't. This is why Jesus showed us the kingdom with so many different aspects of the kingdom. If you see somebody like limping in the store and they're walking and you walk up to them and go, excuse me, I see you're having a hard time. Can I help you with those groceries? You know, this is the stuff, you know, you don't walk around. And, and anyway, you, or can I help you? They look at you. People, people are not kind normally. So when you do a random act of kindness, the Holy Spirit, shoo, he's, he's on it. Yeah. The Holy Spirit's on that. Kindness is something, you know. The kindness of Jesus leads us to repentance. But kindness. And if you just tell somebody, can I pray for you? Now, this is, this is the key. And they go, oh, yeah, yeah, you can pray for me. What you got to do is craft this little prayer. The prayer for pain and the gospel all in the same prayer, just in case. You know what I'm saying? So you pray for somebody and, you know, you say, oh, I believe, you know, oh, I'll pray for you. And they're okay with that. Well, I pray for you because Jesus heals today. He's going to heal you through me. And you make a declaration of that. You pray. And it's okay because their countenance changes. People stand up because people are oppressed and depressed. And they're walking around and their whole countenance. You can see oppression and depression on over 95% of the people at the store. Just reach out. And that's a good way to start your walk with God. Can I pray? And then they'll say, yeah. And, they'll say, and then they'll walk away. Just, you know, you can end it with like, Jesus loves you. Or, you know, I met Jesus. Do you have two minutes? Can I tell you my testimony? He changed my life. He's amazing. He died on that cross for me, and I had a heart revelation of it. I just wanted to share it and have a good day. Plant a seed. You don't have to go into the whole salvation thing, but the number one way in for, for being a radical witness is prayer. It's the number one thing. Now, I've been doing this for 14 years now, and I've never, ever had anybody. Now, people have said this to me. You can pray when you go away. Oh, you still pray for me, but not right here. <laughs> can you go over here? And I go, absolutely. And then I, I lay my hands on them and quick say a few little words, and then I go. And then they're fine. But still pray for that person, because God can answer their prayer. C, remitted the sins of all. Luke 23, 34. It's the only one I highlighted on here. We're going to take a break in a minute. Uh, it's the only one I highlighted here. Um, so I want to go to Luke 23 and read this before we end. I, I, this is, yeah, we can read the second part of this at home. But go to Luke 23 in your Bible. I just wanted to explain the blood covenant today a little bit to start out. I didn't really do this the last time, talking about our covenant, the blood covenant, and why. 
Jesus shed his blood, you know, that we're actually in a real unbreakable covenant with God. Um, and it's all through Jesus Christ. We can't bypass Jesus any way. It is through him. It's not a good person. I'm a good ag. I did this. I forgave this person and that person. If you're not in Christ and he's not in you, you can forgive everybody in the world. You still won't make it to heaven. You, you, you restore relationships, but you're not going to make it to heaven. Everything is in Christ and Christ in you. So Luke 23. Um, this is really powerful, and so I want to read it here in the Bible. I'm going to read out in the New Living Translation. And uh, I'm only going to start here at 34, even though I wanted to read more. But Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not or don't know what they are doing. And the soldiers gamble for, their, for his clothes by throwing the dice. Now, right before that is the other two. Um, two prisoners on the cross. But I just thought to myself, this is a great prayer, you know, right here. And as I was going to talk a little bit about prayer that I've been trying to say, it's a great way to get out there. This, this statement that Jesus said on the cross, I know it's, it is finished and we have everything. All these promises, shame and guilt, our past and the blood. You know, we're just going to go and see all these incredible things that God has. But this Father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing is how we need to look at the world. Like when I was reading this, I was just thinking to myself, we're so easy to look at what people are doing and what they're saying in the church and the world. You know, we're so easy. But I want, I want, I want to... I can't imagine everything that went through Jesus. This, this just rocked me when I was looking at this. Everything that he went through, you know, from the, from the spitting and the humiliation and stripped down the nakedness and all the pain and the, the thorns and, and the spear in his side, you know, nailing him to the cross, beating him until he was unrecognizable. I don't even know who could say that. You know, the, and, and I think how, Father, forgive them. Like, his heart was so that our hearts need to be that if you don't know Jesus, and even if you do know him, there's a place that we can just accelerate in, in his grace and his glory and his power that, that we can just forgive no matter how bad it looks because there's nobody that went through a greater sacrifice than Jesus. And he still he said, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. The revelation is this. If they would have known, 1 Corinthians 2, that they were killing the King of glory. The Lord of glory. That's not there, but it says it in 1 Corinthians 2. If those people that crucified him would have known that they were killing the Lord of glory, they did not know. Right after that it says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has planned for those who love him. That we want to walk in love. 